types of operations that ARINC 615A defines and supports uh, can basically be categorized into four main operations. So the first, uh, the find operation, is used for the discovery of available targets, available loadable LRUs on the, the network. So think of a find as similar to, uh, at the IP level, you have the ping operation that I'm sure a lot of folks are familiar with uh, for just normal LAN networks. It, it's essentially an ARINC 615A ping operation. It's a way to say, uh, to basically query a network for who are the available and active um, targets that speak the ARINC 615A protocol on the network. The information operation is used by the data loader to query uh, a loadable target or LRU for its current software configuration information. So 615A defines a uh, you know um, a standard format for a loadable target to report its software configuration information back to the data loader, and that is via the information operation. The upload operation is used to load software and and LRU specific files from the data loader up to the LRU, and so the operations for how that that goes. Uh, is executed is also defined in 615A. Uh, and then the fourth category is the download category. And, and so this is uh, the basic operation of retrieving logs and different types of files from a target LRU to a data loader. And so ARINC 615A defines basically two ways of doing this. One, a media defined download. Um, and the second is an operator defined download. So a media defined download, basically, um, I think you can think of that as like a batched operation. There, there's um, a 615A specified file that you can put on the data loader that essentially contains a list of all the files that um, an operator should retrieve from a, from a loadable target. So this file essentially just lists out all the files you want to read from the, the remote LRU and so they're, they're, that's a media defined download. Um, it's, it's a batched operation. An operator defined download uh, specifies a mechanism where the data loader can first query the remote LRU for a list of files uh, that it has that are downloadable and then once the operator retrieves that list he or she can select the files from that list that they'd like to retrieve and then basically continue the operation by retrieving the selected files. So it's more of a um, an operator involved type of operation where the media defined is, is a batched operation that's predefined essentially. Okay, the ARINC 615A find operation. The way this works is really simple. The data loader broadcasts or multicasts an information request or IRQ packet uh, just using a UDP port and the, the typical port for that is port 1001. Um, and on standard Ethernet, this, this message can be sent to a broadcast or a multicast address like 192, 168, 255, 255, say if you're broadcasting it on a subnetwork. In ARINC 664, this IRQ message can be sent on a multicast VL that would go, say, to all or some subset of the LRUs on the 664 network that we know are um, uh, that we know support the 615A operations. Once the the, uh, the loadable targets receive the IRQ message, if they are in a mode that they can be data loaded they respond with uh, an information answer message also via UDP uh, to port 1001 and in this IAN message they provide basic information like the, the ID of the target, the name of the target, its position um, and also by the act of responding they provide the data loader with the IP address and their Ethernet MAC address of where they're located. So um, in this way the, the 615A find operation allows the data loader to discover and identify where the loadable targets are on the network. Pretty simple operation, again very similar to a ping, a request and and then replies from everybody who's listening goes back to the data loader. Okay, the information operation. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll go through s sort of the basic flow of both the data loader side and the target side for an information operation. And remember an information operation is used by the data loader to retrieve uh, software configuration information in a standardized format from the 615A loadable targets. So the way that a data loader operation, uh, I'm sorry, the way that an information operation starts off is that uh, when the operator of the data loader 
kicks off the operation, the first thing that happens is the data loader uh, uses its TFTP client to do a request to read a specific file with the extension LCI uh, from the target. So this LCI file, the content and format of this file is defined in ARIANG 615A. So essentially you can think of the, uh, an LCI file as a protocol message at the ARIANG 615A level. So, but instead of say like a TFTP message which is transferred in the contents of a UDP payload, a 615A message is transferred in the contents of a file and the format of the messages are defined in the format of these files in the 615A spec. So the target will respond by providing the uh, LCI file to the data loader and the contents of that file will indicate to the data loader if the information operation is accepted or denied by the target. If the target accepts the operation uh, you can think of it, it's, it's process on the target side of basically forking into two threads or two processes at this point. One process will basically be that the, the target side will, for the duration of the operation, at some set period, transmit a status file. And a status file is identified with an LCS uh, extension. Again, this status file is, is essentially a 615A message. So the format and contents of this file are defined in the 615A spec and the target uses this as basically a heartbeat message to keep the data loader um, up to date on the current status of the operation and to basically signal that the target is still alive well and processing the, um, the information operation request. Once the target is able to process and basically collect the configuration information, it will send it to the data loader in an, a file identified by the LCL extension. This file, also a protocol file at the 615A level, whose format and content is defined in the ARIANG 615A specification, contains the standard formatted uh, software configuration information uh, of the software, the current software load on the target device. So you can see that uh, on the data loader side, the essential flow is the data loader acts as a client to do a file request to basically initiate the operation. Once the operation's been initiated, the data loader really becomes passive at that point. It goes into basically a TFTP server mode where it listens for status files to be put uh, to it from the target side and it also listens and waits for the standard formatted uh, software configuration information to be put or, or written to it from the clients on the target side. Uh, in this slide we have basically a, a, a pictorial uh, image of of what the contents of that LCL file that contains the software configuration information looks like. So it basically provides a serial number um, of the target hardware uh, and then also a listing of all the loadable software parts along with the part number of each software part and the revision level and some other um, user defined information about that loadable software part. So again it's a standard format for reporting configuration information of the loadable software on a target and it's contained in this LCL file which is defined in the 615A spec and which is sent um, by the target to the data loader during the information operation. The, the TFTP uh, protocol, uh, because all of the protocol files and the data files are exchanged using that, um, go over that real quickly. Pretty simple, two basic operations. Um, one is a read request initiated by a client, the other is a write request initiated by a client. So clients can put or write files and they can get or read files from a TFTP server. Uh, they start the operations off by sending a read request or a write request to the server. Um, if it's a read request, uh, the server side will acknowledge that with a data packet. Uh, uh, by default, the data packets uh, contain 512 byte blocks of the file and so multiple datas and then acknowledges from the other side are exchanged until all of the file contents are transferred across the network. Each data and acknowledge packet contains uh, right before the data a block number and that is used to correlate um, which data block is being acknowledged by the block. It's basically used to identify the, diff the, the 512 byte chunks of the file. So pretty simple um, data act, data act type of protocol. Um, it supports retries, so if a data block is sent and an acknowledge for that data block isn't received within a certain uh, timeout, then the data block can be retransmitted. 
Same thing for the acknowledge. If an acknowledge is sent and it's not acknowledged with the next data block within a certain timeout, um, the sender of the acknowledge can resend the acknowledge. Um, something else we won't get into de detail about today, but is good to know. Uh, TFTP also supports what's called an option negotiation mechanism. So there's several options uh, for how the protocol operates. One is the block size. So I said the default side, default block size is 512. Um, another option uh, that's up for configuration is the timeout. So how long you wait after sending a data block or an act block before retransmitting it, um, de basically declaring that you've gotten no response. So block size, timeout, there's some other options. Um, they can be statically set, uh, like in the configuration information at the client side and the server side. Uh, again, there's also a mechanism where they can be negotiated. So there's some other protocol messages used at the beginning um, the initiation of the, the file transfer that can be used to negotiate those options uh, between the client and the server for each file transfer. <clears throat> the ARIC 615A upload operation, again a very similar flow to the information operation. Um, again recall the upload operation is used to transfer uh, loadable software or, or LRU application specific files from a data loader up to a loadable target. So, just like the information operation, uh, this operation starts by the data loader acting as a TFTP client and requesting a ARIC 615A protocol file identified by an LUI extension from the target. Uh, the target provides that file back and in the contents of that file identifies if it has accepted the operation or not. If it does accept the operation, again it forks basically into two threads. One thread is this periodic sending of this heartbeat status file identified with the LUS extension. This status file indicates that the target is still alive and that the status of the ongoing operation. Um, on the data loader side, once the operation is accepted, the first thing the data loader does is it, it builds a file, again a 615A protocol file identified with an LUR extension, which contains a list of all the loadable LRU specific files that the operator has presented to the data loader for the upload operation. So it provides this file list by doing a client uh, put to the target side um, in this LUR file. Once the target um, receives that LUR file, it's continuing to send the status file. It then processes the, the list of loadable parts in that LUR file. And then it basically goes into a loop where it does TFTP client get requests or read requests from the data loader um, for each of the files listed in that protocol LUR file that was previously sent to the target. So um, kind of in a nutshell a data loader operation is initiated by the data loader by requesting a, uh, um, an operation initialization, initialization or LUI file. Uh, if the target accepts it the data loader then compiles a list of all the loadable parts um, that the operator has presented to the data loader, sends it to the target. Uh, at that point, the data loader is basically in TFTP server mode, and it services requests to read uh, those list of files from the target, and it also services requests to receive or, or write uh, status files from the target to, during the duration of the operation. 